It's passed, and someone's going to hoist that trophy come days end. Will it be someone for the first time? Grant Boone and Paige McKenzie. Here's the overnight leader, Mel Reed. Her second shot at the par 5 third. Yeah, she's really been able to take advantage of this hole so far this week, hitting driver off the deck one of the days, reaching the green yesterday and making eagle in another beautiful approach shot there, uh, hitting the green in two. She's now nine under through ten par fives this week after a two-putt birdie. Jennifer Song, the American, with her second at the fourth. Yeah, and greens are still receptive. It has of course hasn't received any rain since Tuesday, but you can see just how quickly the ball is able to sit on the greens. That would take her to 16 under par, one behind Reed, but Reed, her third at the sixth. Yeah, difficult lie there. Didn't get as clean a contact as she wanted and got a little help right. from off of the hill, but not, not enough for Mel Reed. She would go on to make bogey and drop back to 16 under, tied with Song. The other member of that final group is Jennifer Cupcho, the 23-year-old American, the amateur sensation, trying to win for the first time on the LPGA Tour. A nice par save after missing the green at 6. On the tee at the par 3 7th, a two-way tie, Reed and Song. Song is already gone and come up a bit short. This is Cupcho. Reed still to come. Three of these par threes really difficult. This being one of them doesn't go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a tendency for a lot of the players today. Green starting to firm out a little bit. Paige and I are joined today by Tom Abbott and on the course, Jerry Foltz and Karen Stupples. Temperatures just shy of 70. And Tom, we send it over to you. That hole tucked all the way in the back left, Jerry, and it's a pretty long way today, 200 yards, but helped by the wind still. Yeah, strongest and uh, most sustained wind of the week and straight downwind here. That hole's actually accessible because you got a bank left of it that you can ride down right next to the hole. I've seen it a couple of times. This line is good if it's the right club. Yeah, uh, not quite. Took a soft bounce. We've seen a few of those this week. Obviously, didn't want to go too far past. Airing on the side of caution now. She's going to have a tough putt. So while we have a moment, let's go up to Grant. Drop back to 16 under. Does that open the door? Nine. This is Georgia Hall for back-to-back -back birdies to end the front nine. It's been a really good spell for Georgia Hall, having won in Portland a couple of weeks ago. Got her first victory on U.S. soil, having won the AIG Women's Open at Royal Lytham. This is at the seventh, and Jennifer Song with a tough one here. Yeah, horrible tee shot. They can leave it here, severe uphill lie, which is great on a short bunker shot, but not on a 25 yarder. That is well ridiculous. Class. Well, <laughs> class. <laughs> Tap in par, move on. That was so good, especially with so much sand. Uh, it's a little bit easier on an uphill slope to be able to clip it if it's a little firmer and compact sand, but you could just see, uh, based on her right foot, you can see how much sand is in there. Uh, able to judge with her shoulder angle, kind of hitting almost up on the upslope. You can see the, the loft didn't try to fight the upslope, was able to hit with it, and man, was that a good shot. So much can go wrong there. That's the best shot I've seen in quite some time right there. <laughs> I'd like to be able to tell the viewer at home how to do it, and I have no clue. <laughs> and the way they raked the bunkers this week, there are some deeper grooves uh, with the rakes, so the lies in the bunkers aren't always as good as you would expect. So that was uh, fantastic from Jennifer Song, as she's bidding to win, of course, for the first time. Now, Mel Reed taking a look at this long putt, basically the whole length of the green, Jerry. It is. Ed. What was it? Back 26 steps. She might be on one step, so 75 footer uphill the first, uh, probably third to a half downhill the last little bit. And a bit of a double breaker turning right early, and then there is a point two thirds away there. It starts coming left. It's a little bit tricky when you've got these uphill to downhill, and there's few places on this golf course. I find it very unusual. Not a lot of golf courses you end up with 
a mound where you'd be going, you know, walking uphill in snow both directions uh, and then downhill on the way back. Uh, it's very similar to this putt. She's going to have uh, a real test on speed on this. Anything inside five feet will be uh, satisfactory. Closer than that, just a bonus. Good effort there. Very good. So you got the speed down from long range. It's certainly going to be a fascinating final day for these three players in this final group. Most likely the winner will come from the final group, but you can't go to sleep on someone like Nasa Hataoka, who's uh, creeping up behind them. And now Kupcho, fortunate to go, not go too much further here. No, yeah, this is really the only choice for the shot is to putt. You could chip it along the ground, but that'd be the only other one. More fringe than green. Not a lot of slope either way, uphill or downhill. Good putt there from Cupcho. Been struggling with some back pain this week, Jennifer Cupcho. Upper back pain, she said that she had a rib out earlier in the week, sought treatment for that, and she thinks that uh, some of the inflammation from the rib problem has led to back trouble, so much so that she, um, she was on the brink of not being able to play. She was in that much pain yesterday, but obviously battled through it and <laughs> played very well. But Jennifer in a bit of discomfort uh, during the week here in New Jersey. Now, Mal Reed needs to take care of business here, having dropped a shot on the previous hole. Yeah, these are huge. Oh. oh. Well, today, there's always going to have some ups and downs, but this the low point so far for Mel Reed for the week. Back-to-back -back bogeys. And she falls... One back of Jennifer Song, denied by the lip there. Head scratcher for Reed. Final round of the ShopRite LPGA Classic. Amazing amount of money that's been raised by this tournament over the years. I think it's going to be over 36 million by the end of this week. Henderson with her second to the ninth. Yeah, one of those reachable par fives. Really, really nicely played there. It's not going to be a very accessible hole location coming in with the long club. You're going to see a lot of players kind of ball do exactly that. Now it's got a pretty steep uphill putt right back at it. This is Kelly Tan at the eighth, and Karen Stubbles is there. And this is from 81 yards. She very sensibly hit driver off the tee to get it to the widest part and didn't have to take any issue with the reeds around here. Kelly Tan will have that to bounce back and get to 12 under. All right, so that final group. <laughs> Fortunately, yes. Okay. But without her golf ball. So yes. Here we but, go, third. But they did get a good spot on where it went in, which is where she is now. Oh, and you could see the wind hold that ball up in the air as it was coming down. Back-to-back -back birdies for NASA, and she'll hustle up to the green to look at her putt for par. We'll try to stay two back of this woman, Jennifer Song. 210th career LPGA start, Jerry. Yeah, and uh, showed a lot of uh, form just, a, what, two months ago, if it were, at the Scottish and Women's Open Championship, AIG Women's Open, two seventh place finishes, her best two of the year, but when we watched her play there, I was getting texts from friends' page, and like, where has she been? And right. why is she not here every week? Because it looks so impressive. It's very understated. There's just a lot of fairways and greens, not a lot of mistakes. And she's listening to Karen's advice. That looks like driver. Or is it not? It's driver. Yeah, that's a smart play. 
widest part of the fairway is the farthest part of the fairway, but this one's headed a little right, and it's, it's right on the edge of the swamp. But that's why Karen was saying driver so important. She is up and in play. Three would, would have been in that penalty area. Saw a few groups grow through here, including the penultimate group in front. Uh, every single group has had at least one search party going on, either right or left. You got uh, really high reads, potential lost ball left, and then, of course, the uh, Field of Dreams area over on the right. Now, Cup Joe. Three wood for Jennifer. Oh. That looked like a Field of Dreams opposite field double. Just a little low and Healy. She's okay. She's up. Looked like it sat down though, didn't it? Maybe. Oh yeah, it's up. It's uh, in that first cut of rough. Now Reed with a driver. Yes. I like this play. And it also keeps it out of the wind better, too, Paige, because it's just not going to have as much spin on it. That's a good one. Well, and she's, she's been hitting her driver so well all week, and really coming off of two bogeys, it feels good to kind of stand up there with a the driver, feel like you're in control again. Uh, so maybe she can kind of flip the switch on this uh, little bogey train she's on. We've seen this swing over the last couple of days. Not a lot of hip turn, wide arc, very late hand set, and then a really smooth transition where she's got almost a squat down as she creates some power with her lower body. Really, really pretty golf swing. To the ninth. We were out there earlier, weren't we, Paige? Just a slow putt. Yeah, it's almost deceptively slow because there's not only a ridge. Whew. Good speed there. Almost a ridge, but also from back to front, the entire part of the green slopes that way. A little bit bumpy in the afternoon as well. Hot to Oka for par. And this to try and keep some of her momentum going. She had a string of three birdies. Yeah. How about this? Oh, yeah. That feels like a birdie, doesn't it? Definitely. Into the penalty area off the tee and saves par. She is just two shots back with a reachable par five coming up. That one, in fact. Henderson just tapping in the birdie at the ninth, so that takes her to 11 under par. One under on the front nine, couple of bogeys, and then the three birdies for Brooke. Not out of it. All right, in pink, 10 for birdie at eight. And she's been having a nice little year so far. Had a ninth place finish at Marathon and an 11th place. Didn't like that right off the face. You just know, don't you, Paige? Yeah, and it's, it's so frustrating when you know it's your error. Uh, it's not that you misread it or that the ball bumped or you just got unlucky. It's it's one of the things you can control, and that's putting a good stroke on it. So certainly a missed opportunity for Kelly. You look at the last. 110 for the wind, ending from the right. And they're not did not discuss at all the potential for this to jump. It looked like a pretty decent lie. There's the defense you're talking about. Yeah, and the one thing that you kind of heard him, the caddy say, or her caddy say, is that you don't have to swing quite as hard, which into the wind is a good thing as far as controlling the spin. That needs to go a lot. Will the bunker shot be any easier going into the wind? or? Oh, well, certainly easier going into the wind. It's just going to be a tough bunker shot. Not a lot of green uh, between the, the top edge of that bunker and where the whole location is. Song took driver, flirted with that red line, but now her second. And it is so fortunate to have done that because otherwise it's, it's uh, fighting for a par the way Nasa did. That was a very clean lie. Plenty of club. Smart play. That front hole location with the blustery wind, nah. <laughs> it just tempts you though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Look, at, I mean, it's a, it's a perfect little picture, but safety is behind the hole location. Now Mel Reed. It's 
good golf swing. Quality shot there. Well, it's just smooth, too. You know, the tendency, obviously, when you're nervous is to speed up, but it's also the tendency when it's windy is to speed up the tempo, and that was just really nice and smooth. So Jennifer saw it eight. Very much short-sighted from here. Got to get cute to get it close. Oh, Ooh, that's not a good sound. Not cute. Hmm. Yeah, that's usually where you're going to see a player have that kind of long, languid swing. That was just a little bit short and uh, choppy. Just didn't have the patience in that kind of swing. Cup Joe for need. Cup Joe for just a brief moment had a share of the lead until Mel Reed topped her birdie with one of her own at the third. Now she's in danger of giving at least one back. Her fourth at the par four eighth.